Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, uh, uh, fellow Kenyans. Good evening. I'm Babu Oweno, member of parliament and Bakasi East constituency, and a teacher for our candidates who are going to sit for the exams this year, that is KCSE examination. <coughs> ladies and gentlemen, I would like to tell my students, my viewers, the Muslims, I would like to take this opportunity to wish you Ramadan Karim and Saum Makbul. To our brothers and sisters who are not in a position to access the internet or to access smartphones or are not in a position to afford airtime, I would like to take this opportunity to apologize on your behalf and say that one day you will make it. Do not give up. Everybody starts from the bottom. And after all, if we started from the bottom, we can never lose. Number two, make sure comrades, candidates, students, make sure you work hard until you no longer need to introduce yourself. Next, I would like to take this opportunity to wish Kenyans who are, who are experiencing this pandemic the coronavirus 19, it's been a problem to Kenyans and to the global village. I would like to take this opportunity to tell you to continue adhering, taking precaution so that we can prevent the spread of corona 2019 or corona 19. Make sure you don't leave the house, only leave if there's something important that you're going to do. Make sure you put on masks make sure you sanitize. Thank you, and I wish you all the best as you'll be enjoying the lesson today is chemistry. Our chemistry topic will be proceeding with the previous, uh, from the previous lesson that we had, a topic on organic chemistry. Last time we dealt with alkenes. Today we will deal with alkenes, which is in the homologous series. So today's lesson is still on organic chemistry. And today we will deal with the homologous series still. And we said that homologous series is Homologous series are hydrocarbons that have the same molecular formula, same functional group, but the successive members of the group differ by CH2 group. And today, as part of the homologous series, what we'll deal with is alkenes. So number one, alkenes are long chains. Number two, alkenes have double bonds. Number three, alkenes are presence of the double bonds. And the presence of the double bonds they occupy or they have less number of hydrogen atoms. That's why they are unsaturated. From here, the first alkene we deal with must be an ethene. Why is it an ethene? Because an ethene and an ethene, and it, uh, an ethene has two carbon atoms that have a double bond between the first carbon atom and an adjacent carbon atom. So from here we will go to naming of alkenes.
we will go to naming let me just start from a fresh page so naming or the nomenclature So alkenes have a general formula of CN H2N. So in naming the alkenes, we will just re uh, replace the number of N. N represents the number of carbon atoms. So in our situation, if N is equal to 2, we just simply replace it here because we said that the first alkene is an ethene. Therefore, when we replace here, we, we get C2H. Then when we replace 2 in place of N, it becomes 2 times 2. So this gives you C2H4. So C2H4, this is the molecular formula for ethene. When we want to get the structural formula for ethene, the existence of the double bond, then the hydrogen atoms attached to carbon, So here we have a double bond, then there's a bond here and a bond here. Every carbon atom must have four bonds. So this is an ethene. Then when N is 3, we have C3, H, 2 times 3 is 6. So that is C3, H6. And then again we can draw its structure. So when we draw it that way, hydrogen atoms attached to it, one, two, three, four. So this is called a propene. So in naming the alkenes, the prefix eth or ethene, ethene, eth, is the number of carbon atoms. So if there are two, they are eth. If there are three, they are prop. Then in from the parent name alkene, in is the suffix. So you just replace it there. You just put it there as the suffix. Prop is the prefix that represents the number of carbon atoms. Then in comes from the parent name, which is in alkene so it becomes propene ethene so when n is 4 you have c4 h8 so when n is 4 these are hydrogen atoms So this is called a butene. Butene, the, the number of carbon atoms, then in is the suffix. When n is 5, you get C5, C5, H10. So from here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Hydrogen atoms attached, you make sure you clothe it, as I said last time, one, two, three, four. This will have two hydrogen atoms. This is also two hydrogen atoms. This will have three hydrogen atoms. So these are one, two, three, four, five. That is a pentene. Pent means five, then you take the the suffix which is in from the parent name alkene, in. Then when N is 6, that is C6. This is only one hydrogen atom because there are two bonds here and one bond here and another bond. So every carbon must have four bonds. So like this carbon has one, two, three, four bonds. This has one, two, three, four. This one, two, 
then 3, then 4. This was 1, 2, 3, 4. So, this is from the word hex. Hex means 6, then in, hexil. So, in our syllabus, we are required to know the first six alkenes. That is ethene, propene, butene, pentene, and hexene. Then from here, we go to isomerism. Isomerism. Class, last time I said that isomers are organic compounds or are hydrocarbons which have the same molecular formula but different structural formulas. Isomers are hydrocarbons or organic compounds with the same molecular formula but different structural formulas. So, Biki here, I want us to, to, to name the isomers. Number one, if we have this compound, and then we have this compound. Now, in isomerism, we have two types of isomerism here. We have positional isomerism and chain isomerism. So one, we have positional isomerism and two, we have chain isomerism. So we will combine the two in the process of naming. We will name them as the position of the carbon double bond on the carbon atoms changes. In positional isomerism involves the change in the double bond, the position, the change in the position of the double bond. Then chain isomerism involves the branch, branching of the alkenes. So we will name it, we will name it, I will just write down the examples, then we name it in form of positional or chain isomerism. So if we, if we have this, if we have this, then you change the position of the double bond. You form isomers just by changing the position of the double bond. This. So this is out, don't consider this. This is, you have one hydrogen atom there, but the position of the double bond has changed. This is one, this is two. Then the third one, if we have this, that. Hydrogen atoms, make sure it's attached to the carbon, one, two, three, one, one, two, three, four. So this is not there, one, two, three, four, then one, two, three, four. These are hydrogen atoms, then one, two, three, four. This is not their class. So. When we have the three, how do we name them? The first one, rule number one, identify the longest continuous carbon chain. The longest continuous carbon chain in our first one is one, two, three, four. You just count it, one, two, three, four. So if it is four, it means it is a butte. 
Then identify the position of the double bond. The position of the double bond is on the first carbon atom. Then when you're separating the numbers and the letters, the letter, you separate it from a number, you use a hyphen, then one, the position of the double bond on the first carbon atom, then a number and a letter, again you separate with a hyphen, then you just add in from the parent alkene. So this is built one in. Class, identify the longest continuous chain, that is one, two, three, four, makes it a built. Then the carbon atom, the, the double bond is on the first carbon atom, which is here, you write it like that. Then you add in, so it is built one in. The second one, class, count the number of the, uh, uh, the carbon atoms on the longest continuous chain. That is one, two, three, four. So if it is four, again it is a but. Then identify the position of the double bond. It is on the second carbon atom, one, two, hyphen, two. Then just add in. So this compound is built to in. What about the third one? The same rule applies. Identify the longest continuous chain. 1, 2, 3 or 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3 or 1, 2, 3. So if you know that it is there are 3, you go to prop. The position of the double bond is on the first carbon atom. So it can be prop 1 in. But remember, ethene and propene, they only have one double bond. The position of the double bond can only appear on the first carbon atom. So the position of the double bond appears on the first carbon atom. So there is no need of writing prop 1 in. You can just write it as propene. That only applies on ethene and propene. Then anything else which is not along the longest continuous chain is a branch. Anything else which is not on the longest continuous chain is a branch. So identify that branch. This is where the branch is. This is where the branch is. So class, what type of a branch is this? Number one. This branch has one carbon atom together with three hydrogen atoms less one hydrogen atom. So it belongs to an alkyl group. And which type of alkyl group is it? It is an, a methyl. It is a methyl because methyl has one carbon atom, three hydrogen atoms less one hydrogen atom. So it is a methyl, methyl group. Then... The branch is on which carbon atom? Identify the branch on which carbon atom? One, two. The branch is on the second carbon atom. Therefore, you just join the three to form two methyl propene. So you can write it as two methyl. Then you can use a small letter for this to be propene. That is the first one. Then we can do another example. Another example for the isomer, isomerism. If we have this compound, make sure you dress it, you clothe it. And uh, this is one, this is two. Now change the position of the double bond to come here. The third one. Now after this, because if, if you bring this double bond here, it will still be, the double bond will be on the second carbon atom from this side. It is also on the second carbon atom from this side. So you just leave it at that. Then we try to branch them. 
maintaining the number of carbon atoms. So the number of carbon atoms are still five, but let's see, we branch them. One, two, three, four, but we branch from here. What will we get? One, two, three, four. And again, if we branch another one, we place the position of the of the double bond here. Then we branch it from here. So that's okay. Suppose we branch again here to get the fifth one. We have this, but we make a branch at this point. Is a double bond one, two, three, four. So let's name this class. The first one, very fast, identify the longest continuous chain one, two, three, four, five. So it gives you an idea of a pent. Then the position of the double bond is on the first carbon atom. So you write pent one, then you just add the suffix. In. So it is pent one in. Second one, very first class. Identify the longest continuous chain. One, two, three, four, five. It's still a pent. But the position of the carbon of the double bond is on the second carbon atom, therefore it is pent two. You just add the suffix in. The third one, class, be very attentive here. Identify the longest continuous carbon chain, one, two, three, four, or one, two, three. Therefore, we go with the longest, which is four. So once we know it is four, we know that it is a but the double bond is on the first carbon atom. So it is a but one in. Remember, you've just named the longest continuous chain, but there is a branch. Anything which is not on the longest continuous chain is a branch. How do we name this branch? The branch has one carbon atom, three hydrogen atoms, less one hydrogen atom. Therefore, it is a methyl. It is a methyl. Then the branch is on which carbon atom? On the second carbon atom. Therefore, it is two methyl built one in. You just join this to this to this. So it is 2 methyl but 1 in. Next one class, identify the longest continuous carbon chain. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4. Here we have 1, 2, 3. Therefore we go with 4, which is a but. But the, but the double bond is on the second carbon atom. 1, 2. 1, 2, 3, 4. It's on the second carbon atom. Therefore it is built to in. Then anything outside that longest continuous chain is a branch. This is a methyl branch and the methyl branch is again on the second carbon atom. Therefore it is two methyl but, but two in. Lastly class Identify the longest continuous chain, one, two, three, four, or one, two, three, four. So the longest continuous chain is a but, but the double bond is on the first carbon atom, so it is but one in, although there is a branch, anything else outside 
the longest continuous chain is a branch. The branch has one carbon atom, three hydrogen atoms, less one. Therefore, it is a methyl branch. But when it is a methyl branch, it is on which carbon atom? One, two, three, four. It is on the fourth carbon atom. It is, it is on the third carbon atom. Therefore, it is three methyl butyl one in class this is very very simple so we have that class as our isomers and today is an interactive class as you can see i want to check from my phone class i can see some of my students are very attentive i can see ann joroge has a pen and a paper, very attentive. Senior Times, Masese Bosibori, Flora, Roman. I can see Mutula Kilonzo following. Wow, I can see Baba, Raila Amolo Odinga following. This is interesting. Baba, we must ensure that our students pass. I can see Elisha Odiambo. I can see Jobson Otieno. I can see Martha. I can see my wife Frida is also following. You can see you are very loyal <laughs> and submissive. <laughs> Thank you. So I urge you class to be attentive. Just hang on my lips. Give me your ears and you will enjoy your class. The next part we are going to reactions. Okay, before we go to reactions, we will go to laboratory preparation. We go to laboratory, laboratory preparation of alkenes. In laboratory preparation or lab preparation of alkenes, we have alcohol. CnH2n plus 1 OH when it reacts in the presence of conch sulfuric acid and a temperature of 170 degrees Celsius to around 180 degrees Celsius what do we get? We get an alkene plus water in this reaction, conch sulfuric acid, this process is called dehydration. It acts as a dehydrating agent. Dehydration means removal of water. So it only removes the whole H and one H here. It removes the whole H and one H. So the two H and O forms water. Then an alkene, we get it from that. So if we can draw the structure of this, This is a round bottom flask. This is a thermometer. And this is a cork. So we have that. A tripod stand.
we have that. A cock. So this excuse my drawing it may not be very accurate because I don't have a ruler here and then here we have a trough water trough yes So this is water. And then we have bubbles here. So I want to name our structure. This is heat. So class, pay attention. I want to explain this diagram, what happens. This reaction taking place here. So this is th a thermometer. That is our thermometer, measures the temperature between 170 degrees Celsius to 180 degrees Celsius. And then here we have conch sulfuric acid. And then a mixture of conch sulfuric acid and then a mixture conch sulfuric acid plus an alcohol. Then here we have conch sodium hydroxide. Here we have an alkene gas. This is water. This is a trough, water trough. This is a gas jar. Then this is a beehive. So class concentrate here, I want to explain to you what happens on this figure, on this diagram. This is a round bottom flask. So first, this is an alcohol mixed with conch sulfuric acid. Uh, dehydration process takes place. During the dehydration process, excess heat is produced. That excess heat is absorbed by sand. This is sand. Because the reaction is an exothermic reaction. In an exothermic reaction, heat is produced. In an endothermic reaction, heat is produced within. It is absorbed, not produced. Endothermic reaction, heat is absorbed. Exothermic reaction, heat is produced. So the process, uh, when, when uh, alcohol is mixed with conch sulfuric acid, heat is produced. That excess heat is absorbed by sand. Then we have heating here. This heating, we have a thermometer. <coughs> the thermometer ensures that the temperature does not go below 170 degree, degrees Celsius to 108 degrees, 180 degrees Celsius. 
because if the temperature goes to 140 degrees Celsius class, be attentive, if the temperature goes below 140 degrees Celsius, then we will produce ethers, yet we want to produce alkenes. At 140 degrees Celsius and below, we will produce ethers. So that is the reason why we have the thermometer to control, to ensure that we have our exact temperature at 170 to 180 degrees Celsius. Then during the process of the reaction of heating and this reaction, some carbon dioxide gas may be produced. That carbon dioxide gas is absorbed in using conch sodium hydroxide. So the function of the, the sodium hydroxide here, conch sodium hydroxide, is to absorb, is to absorb any carbon dioxide produced here. Then after that, we have our gas is going to be collected under water. Why is it collected under water? Because the gas, the alkenes are insoluble in water. They do not dissolve in water. Therefore, they are produced under water. So here we will have our alkene ga uh, gas. So if we want to produce ethene from alcohol, we will use ethanol. So when we use ethanol, we will produce ethene gas. When ethanol is uh, uh, dehydrated, is hydrated, hydration process, when ethanol is hydrated, we get ethene. When propanol is hydrated using conch sulfuric acid, we get propene. So from here we can get an equation of uh, C2H5. OH. This is an ethanol in the presence of conch sulfuric acid. Then we have temperature of 170 degrees C to 180 degrees C. We get C2H4 which is ethene plus water because water is removed. Hydration. So that is our equation. That has blotted so much. We use the next paper. So class, from here, we proceed to physical properties. Physical properties of alkenes. Now, the first physical property of alkenes is that ethene, propene, and butene. These are gases. They are gaseous at room temperature and pressure. Then number two, ethene, propene, and butene are gaseous at room temperature and pressure. Then we have pentene and hexene are liquids at room temperature and pressure. Then another property is that the longer the chain, the longer the chain, the higher the boiling point and the melting point. So as you go high from ethene to propene to butene to pentene to hexene, the boiling point and the melting point of the compounds increases. Therefore, the longer the chain, the longer the boiling point and the the higher the boiling point and the higher the melting point. So melting point and boiling point increases with an increase in the number of chains. Class, we are done with the Physical. There are other physical properties that you can add, but these are the main ones. Next. Class, we go to chemical properties. Chemical properties. Today, our lesson will be very short. Chemical properties of alkenes.
So in chemical properties, we have reactions. So reaction with hydrogen. When we want to subject alkenes to react with hydrogen, they react by a process called additional reaction. This is additional reaction. They react by adding. So the first one with hydrogen, we have an ethene reacting with hydrogen. We have hydrogen. This hydrogen forms hydrogen and hydrogen bond. But when they react, there's a catalyst. They react in the presence of a catalyst. The catalyst speeds up the rate of a reaction. The catalyst is nickel. Nickel catalyst or nickel, depending on where you come from. Nickel catalyst. Then another condition, at a temperature of 200 degrees, the temperature is 200 degrees Celsius. Then at a pressure of 150 atmosphere. So these are the conditions required. This can come in examination. You can be given this equation. Then you are told, you are asked which conditions does this react. Under catalyst called nickel, temperature of 200 degrees C, and pressure of 150 atmosphere. So what does it form when it reacts? What you do, when alkenes react, they react by breaking bonds. So just break the bond. Just maintain the number of carbon atoms, then break the bond. So when you break the bond, insert the four hydrogen atoms that you had. One, two, three, four. Then these two hydrogen atoms just fixes on the first carbon atom and on the next carbon atom that has the double bond that has broken. So they fix here and here. So class, when they react this way, you have an ethene. Which compound is this? C2H6. This is an ethene. This is ethene. So we have ethene and we have ethane. So when you add hydrogen, when you add hydrogen to ethene, you get ethane. So from ethene, ethene is unsaturated. But ethane is saturated. So when you have unsaturated alkene, you add hydrogen, you get a saturated ethane. Next class, we can just do it here, sorry. Let's deal with propene. So we have propene. Propene, you add hydrogen atoms, hydrogen and hydrogen bond. That is covalent bonding, nonmetals. I told you just maintain the number of carbon atoms. Then fix the hydrogen that we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. You can see when it breaks a bond, we have two remaining, which is occupied by the hydrogen atom here and hydrogen atom here. Therefore, propene, you add hydrogen to it, you get a propane. So alkenes, when you take alkenes, you add hydrogen, you get alkenes. A process called hydrogenation. The process, process of this reaction is called hydrogenation. Addition of hydrogen. Class mwalimu wenyu wameiva sana. Na mtaiva venye mwalimu wameiva hivi. This time round, our students must pass. Next, let me write on a clean one. 
So reaction with halogens. Number two, reaction with halogens. Halogens are chlorine, fluorine, bromine, and iodine. These are the halogens. So class the same process. The reaction is by addition. The process is called halogenation. Halogenation. Addition of uh, halogens to alkenes is called halogenation. So in this process, we have again ethene. You add chlorine. So in chlorine, we have chlor chlorine and chlorine bond. Then what do we get? Fix the number of hydrogen atoms. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Then chlorine will take the two spaces where there were double bonds that has broken. So this is ethene. Ethene, you add chlorine through a process called halogenation because it is a halogen what do you get uh, what do you get here class one two this chlorine is on the first carbon atom then this chlorine on the second carbon atom so you get one two dichloro one two dichloro ethane 1, 2, dichloroethane. What about we, we try with another one, which is uh, propene? So when propene reacts with bromine, what do we get? Fix the hydrogen atoms, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, so there are 6, then in the two remaining where the bond breaks, we have bromine and bromine, so they just join where the bond breaks. Therefore, if they join, when you name it, longest continuous chain is propane. Then bromine is on the first carbon atom, another bromine on the second carbon atom. Then there are two, it is di, then it is bromo. One, two, di, bromo, propane. Very easy class, very easy. Then the next, the next reaction with hydrogen halides. The hydrogen halides that we have are HCl hydrogen fluoride, hydrogen bromide, hydrogen, sorry, hydrogen iodide. These are called hal hydrogen halides. That is hydrogen chloride, hydrogen fluoride, hydrogen bromide, and hydrogen halide. So when we take our first example, ethene, reacting with hydrogen chloride what do we get number one you open it when they react so how many are these one two three four just write the four then on the two carbon atoms we have hydrogen and chloride forming a covalent bond there so hydrogen attaches itself here 
and chlorine attaches itself there. So from this, how do we name this? 1, 2, then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Then we have a chlorine here. So how do you name this? This is a chloroethane. Chloroethane. Now we do one more uh, with propene. We were doing ethene and propene. So with propene, So class, in this when you add hydrogen chloride, that is hydrogen and chlorine, what do we get? Pay attention here class. Just write your structure here. Then fix the number of hydrogen atoms that are here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Class B attentive. So in this, where do we fix hydrogen and where do we fix chlorine? So in fixing this, we use a rule called the Makonkov rule. Makonkov rule. Makonkov rule. The Makonkov rule states that, write it down class, Makonkov rule states that hydrogen atom is added to the carbon atom with the highest number of hydrogen atoms in the product or in the compound form. Class, repeat, kindly write this again. Makonkov rule states that hydrogen atom, this hydrogen atom, is added on the, on the carbon atom with the highest number of hydrogen atoms. Okay? So this is where we say, even in the Bible, they say that those who have in plenty, more shall be added unto you. And those who lack, those who have little, even the little that you have, shall be taken away from you. And you saw classes, by the way, I know you also watch news, you also know politics. People like Murko and who had little, the little they had, <laughs> was taken away from them. And today you saw again, the little that Kindiki had was taken away from him. So Makonkov rule, hydrogen atom is added to the carbon atom with the highest number of hydrogen atoms. So in our equation, this is, the, this is the carbon atom with two hydrogen atoms. This carbon atom only has one hydrogen atom. Therefore, the hydrogen atom will be added on this carbon atom. So therefore, this hydrogen will be added on the first carbon atom. Then chlorine will be added on the second carbon atom. So how do we name this class? Just identify the longest continuous chain, which is 1, 2, 3, which is a propane. Then chlorine is on 1, 2, 3. Chlorine is on the second carbon atom. Therefore, it is 2 chloropropane. 2 chloropropane. Class, this lesson is very, very interesting. I hope you are enjoying. We are almost through. We are almost through. Next is reaction or addition of water in the presence of conch sulfuric acid. 
addition of water in the presence of conch sulfuric acid. So if we have our ethene, then this process will take two stages. So stage one, stage one, you add conch sulfuric acid. And in this stage, when you add conch sulfuric acid, what do you get? So conch sulfuric acid, we have hydrogen and hydrogen sulfate. Pay attention class. Then from here, how many hydrogen? One, two, three, four. We have four hydrogens. One, two, three, four. Four hydrogen. Then this hydrogen will attach itself here. Then hydrogen sulfate will attach itself here. So how do we name this compound? The compound has two carbon atoms. Then it has one, two, three, four, five hydrogen atoms less one. Therefore, it is an ethyl group, an alkyl group. But which alkyl group? An ethyl group because it has two carbon atoms, five hydrogen atoms less one. So it is an ethyl. That one we've named this. Then now we name this. Ethyl hydrogen sulfate. Class, this is stage one. Stage two, we have ethyl hydrogen sulfate, this compound. This compound, when you add water, water has hydrogen and hydroxyl or the OH group. The OH group, what do we get? One, two, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so you fix them. One, two, three, four, five. Then class be attentive. From here, we have the OH group. The OH group will fix itself here. Then we will have hydrogen remaining because we cannot fix hydrogen anywhere here. Therefore, the height of ethyl hydrogen sulfate reacting with water in the presence of conch sulfuric acid. We have hydrogen and hydroxyl or the OH group. When you draw, when you break the bond, when, sorry, from here we said it is additional reaction. So just draw the two number of two carbon atoms. Then fix the one, two, three, four, five hydrogen atoms. That is one, two, three, four, five. Therefore, in this, what takes its place? Hydroxyl or the OH group will take its place here. Then it will remain floating, reacts with water to form the conch sulfuric acid. Therefore, when you react alkenes or ethene, with water in the presence of conch sulfuric acid you form this compound what is the name of this compound this is ethanol that is ethanol class you get ethanol plus conch sulfuric acid therefore the conch sulfuric acid was acting in this reaction as a catalyst therefore this was reacting as a catalyst very very interesting We are almost through class. In the next few minutes, we'll be done. And just a little concentration. Next, we have reaction of ethene with water in the presence of acidified 
acidified oxidizing agent reaction of ethene with water in the presence of acidified oxidizing agent the oxidizing agents that we know are one potassium dichromate potassium dichromate and two potassium permanganate potassium permanganate so class be careful here we want to write the equation that is our ethene reacts with water in the presence of acidified oxidizing agent is represented by that then the arrow you write h plus h positive means acidified then this is the oxidizing agent then here we have hydrogen and h group h bond now what do we get from here class be attentive just break the bond then fix the number of hydrogen atoms 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 4 then we have where the bond breaks we want to know what do we fix there first of all we will fix we will fix the H OH group in one of them then we have hydrogen remaining here this hydrogen combines with this oxygen which is an oxidizing agent it is oxidized when the hydrogen is oxidized we will get the hydroxyl when they combine you get the H OH. and then we have our compound so how do we name our compound this compound because it has two carbon atoms that is an ethan then H OH group is on the first carbon atom Another OH group is on the second carbon atom. Then there are two di all. So this compound is called ethan 1, 2, di all. Class, we're almost finishing. This is very easy. Extremely easy. You just need concentration and just follow it. Class, in the next few minutes, we are finishing, like five minutes to ten minutes. Now, we want to go to combustion. Okay, before we go to combustion, we go to reaction with self. Reaction with self. A process called polymerization. Polymerization. You can say polymerization or, or polymerization, depending on where you came from. If you came from America, you say polymerization. If you came from uh, UK, you, you say polymerization. So that depends on how also you are brought up. We, Luos, we can also say polymerization. But you know it is shown. <laughs> so in this, again we will have and ethene plus another ethene and ethene plus an ethene this is a monomer monomer and a monomer gives you a polymer but which polymer monomer means one Another monomer means one. Gives you poly means many. Mono means one. Monogamous. Monogamous. Polymer means many. Polyandry. Polygamous. Polytechnic. Poly. Many. Therefore, many monomers forms polymers. A process called polymerization or polymerization. 
So in this process, an ethene reacting with an ethene, you do that, then you put N here. This N means that there are many monomers before reaction, before. Then after reacting, they will form what? Uh, oh, when they react, they break the bonds. This is the first one, then you add to the second one. Then you bring N here. After chemical reaction, before chemical reaction, after chemical reaction. This is called polyethene. When ethene, ethene and ethene reacts, they form polyethene. When we do, let's try propene. Let's try propene. So this reacts with another one. One, two, three, four, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Okay, good. So when these two, one, two, three, four. So this, you put N here, means before the chemical reaction, then what polymer does it give you? You open this up. It gives you this with N here. So propene under propene gives you poly polypropene. You have to be careful here. This one means that we've left it. We've left it to attach itself with other propenes. So this gives you polypropene. So let's see if the bonds are uh, correctly placed here. Carbon, one, two, three, four. Then carbon, one, two, three, four. And one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Good. This is polymerization. Class, lastly, and I'll give you an assignment after this, so you must take the assignment down to summarize everything that we've done. The combustion. Combustion of ethene or al combustion of alkenes. So we take ethene. So when you take an ethene, C2H4, you combat comb combustion, you burn in excess oxygen, you get carbon dioxide and water. The same thing al alkenes. When you burn them in excess oxygen, you get carbon dioxide and water. So if we balance this equation, two hydrogen atoms, four hydrogen atoms, so we put here two to get four hydrogen atoms, four hydrogen atoms. Then carbon are two, carbon is one here, so you place two there to give you two carbon atoms. Then oxygen is two times two is four, plus two times one is two, so four plus two is six, and here we have two, therefore you add three here. Then they are all, these are gases and this is liquid. So class, after that we go to uses of ethene. The first use of ethene helps in the ripening. Ripening of fruits. 
the fruits that we have if you subject it to ethene gas it will ripen number 2 manufacture of polymers so in this case it is polyethene polyethene is the polythene the paper bag that you use the paper bag that was burned because they are non biodegradable lastly is an assignment class an assignment write this down if we have ethene what do we do to ethene to get an ethanol you get that then on this side and mostly in exams this summarizes everything that we've done and this can be this is likely to come in your examination again here we have ethanol what do we do to ethanol what are the conditions subjected to ethanol to get ethene then here if we have hydrogen what when we take ethene and we had hydrogen what do we get then again ethene when you had hydrogen halide which is hydrogen chloride what do we get then here when we have ethene we add water to it in the presence of acidified in the presence of acidified potassium dichromate what do we get again here when we burn it in excess oxygen what do we get and again name this process name process then again here when we add bromine bromine what do we get process called halogenation so again the product that we form here when we what do we add here to get this or rather if we add oxygen if we burn it in oxygen what do we get here again so class this is the end of our class this is your assignment and i would like to thank you very much for listening for taking notes and what i can see here class i can see people are very attentive we have uh, edith motuka thank you for being with us rollins oji we have mike sonko we have oscar sudi hey <laughs> clap for oscar sudi this one is going to be a new beginning and uh, we have uh, ezekiel mutua opio clio kegan kirugo eric mutinda mutai ken koech nelson nora kerich shiku tilweiga Asante ni sana. I love you all. God bless you. God bless you. My Instagram fans. On Instagram we have I am Abedi, we have Soshi, we have Brian Kim, we have Emmanuel, we have uh, Katrina, we have Kalius Brand Beggy Slick Gadgets Thank you guys we are together Kazi Kosawa on YouTube Joshua Bosire Kudos Sharon Perez Kasim Katana Tessia Bade 
uh, Omar Musa Muhammad Ali Mwangare we have Wanjiku Shiro we have Steven Ondieki we have Jonte Mjanja we have Abdi Eriko Young CEO Kenya Leonard Kelvin Nancy Andeyo Felix Gashagwa we have Muredi Muredi Steven we have Philip Okeyo Teddy Okech Munene Lu Luis Odiambo We have a uh, coach Thank you thank you thank you thank you guys thank you You can subscribe My YouTube is uh, Babu Wino TV Instagram is Echi Babu Wino Facebook is Babu Wino Thank you all God bless you kindly subscribe 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 TB man to my candidates I will ensure that you pass exams just stick with me to our parents just lend me your children give them time whatever you can give them the gadgets the airtime give them I will ensure that they remove you from the slums I will ensure that they raise you from where you are because I know how much you struggle as a parent having gone through all this process in the slums i know what it takes and i will change your lives thank you god bless you all thank you